Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to make macarons. No, not macaroons. Macarons, the light, airy little almond flour cookies that are so delicate and so dainty. I'm going to show you exactly how to make those with little pressure at all. It's going to start with three room temperature egg whites. And this is Italian Tupperware, okay? This is, it's egg whites, I promise. <laughs> See, there goes a little on the counter. All right. So I'm going to put three egg whites right here into my stand mixer. And I'm going to start beating them until they turn frothy. And whenever they start to froth up, I'm going to go ahead and add about a quarter cup of lemon sugar that I have right here because we're going to make them so light and luscious and fragrant. It's going to blow your mind. Pick this up. Start my whip going. There you go. So my egg whites are getting frothy and I'm going to be super fast. I'm going to slowly add in my sugar while the mixer is going. I'm just going to turn the speed down to medium low and uh, we're going to go ahead and beat that until stiff peaks form. It's been quite a while and we certainly do have stiff peaks. You can see now from the mixer, we have stiff peaks. So I'm gonna pick it up. There you go. It's also beautiful and glossy. I wanna mix this for one more minute and I want to add four drops of yellow food coloring and that's going to help color and denote that these are lemon flavored macarons. You know how you normally associate flavors with colors, which is why you see them colored in bakeries and such. So we're going to put four drops of yellow food coloring into the meringue, whip it for one more minute. While that's happening, in a separate bowl with a sieve or a strainer, I'm going to go ahead and sift together one cup of almond flour and one and three quarter cups of powdered sugar. So I'm going to sift all of that together while the food coloring is mixing up into the meringue. Then we're going to put it together and make those really magical cookies. The mixer is finally done. I have a beautiful yellow meringue and I'm sifting together my almond flour and powdered sugar because I want them light and fluffy, no clumps. That's the secret to these cookies. Okay, I've got a lovely bowl of sifted almond flour and powdered sugar. I've got my mixing utensil right here. So now I'm going to disengage my meringue from the mixer, from its holder. Yep, there we go. It's so cool. Look. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle in some of my almond flour mixture on top of the meringue and start to fold it very lightly. And I just want to fold it until there's no streaks left, but I want to do this in phases. So I'm going to do it in three phases. The first, I'm going to put a third of this powder on top, just like that. And to fold it, I want to go around and bring under and above. So here, this is folding. And the meringue is going to give it its light airiness, and the almond flour is going to give it its texture. Gorgeous. All right, there are no streaks left in the batter. There's some left on the bowl, but I'm not concerned about that. I'm just concerned about the batter, just like that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is set this aside, and we're going to get pretty technical here. I'm going to get my sheet tray. This is where we're going to get a little fancy schmancy. I have an empty jar and a Ziploc bag. And what I'm going to do is put my macaron mixture into this Ziploc bag. And this is going to take the place of a piping bag. It's going to make life so much easier for you so you don't have to worry about using the, the right tips or anything like that. Yeah. All right. Make sure that the jar has a pretty wide mouth. And I just want to put it in the bag just like this. There we go. Actually, you don't even need the jar. Just fold the top down a little bit. 
and it'll usually stand up on its own. There we go. So 80 takes the jar all together. Decided to go against that. This is what will make my life so much easier. There. So my pepping mixture is in my bag. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cinch it closed a little bit to squeeze out as much air as possible. Pushing all of the batter into one corner of the bag. There we go. Okay. Get your lined baking sheet. I'm going to use a sill pad, and a lot of people like to use parchment paper. That's fine. And if you do, you can even get the ones that have the um, like little circles that are already on it, or you can draw little circles on your parchment, and that's going to tell you how big to make the macarons. I'm just going to eyeball it, which most people would be like, oh my God, no. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. I'm going to cut the tip off of my piping bag right here, my makeshift piping bag, about an eighth of an inch off. So now I'm going to drop these cookies about the size of a quarter onto my cookie sheet. And when you have a little bit of batter left, you should probably just go ahead and try it. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to take my tray and slap it down on the counter a couple of times. And this is going to get all the air bubbles to come up. So, one more time. Okay. So, in a bowl of just a small bowl right here, I have a little bit of water. I'm going to dip my finger in it very lightly and pat down any points that might be standing up because we don't want a point on the cookie with a nice smooth shell on it. Okay. So, just very gently dip your finger and pat down. Any little points that you may see. They're going to be sandwich cookies, so you want to make sure that they're about as symmetrical as you can, that each cookie may have a partner. So if you have to kind of spread it out and, you know, press it just a little tiny bit to make them round, that's okay. That's fine. We're going to let this sit out at room temperature for about an hour because we want like a little, like a little skin, like a little crust to form on each one of these cookies. That way it's drying out. The air is evaporating from it, which is going to give us that light, crisp, pop, that texture that makes our macarons so unique. Okay, let these sit out for about an hour, and then we're going to bake them in a low oven. Enough time has passed where the macarons are really dry, and you can kind of, you know, kind of feel that they've got a little bit of a shell on them already. So I'm going to put these in an oven at 285 degrees for 15 minutes, and they're going to rise up and give us a really beautiful you know, crackly dome that we're so familiar with. So these are going to go in the oven for 15 minutes. And while those are baking, I'm going to start on the filling, the cream cheese filling. So these guys go in. And to start on the cream cheese filling, I have six ounces of softened cream cheese right here. I'm going to put in three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar and a tablespoon and a half of milk. And I'm just going to Start mixing it all together until it gets a really smooth consistency. You know, I've got a pretty smooth consistency here, and you can see it's a little bit wet, but I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and let it kind of refirm a little bit. It's still going to be pretty soft and pliable, which is what we're looking for, but it's going to harden up just a little tiny bit, which is going to be just enough for us to pipe into the cookies. Okay, so we have about 13 minutes left on our timer. That should give us plenty of time to get this chilled. 15 minutes later, and we have cookies. Okay. These little beauties have puffed up really nicely. And you can see on some of them here, they have a nice little foot. And you're going to see exactly what that's for. It's going to be a nice smooth surface where we can go ahead and put our fillings. But we have to let them cool for at least 10 minutes. So I'll reset that guy for 10, and we'll come back and check the progress. The cookies are really nicely crackly. They have a super hard surface. You can hear it. Hear the tap. And look at that beautiful foot. It's a solid bottom that's going to hold all of that filling all together. Now, the parchment paper and sole pad are going to make it really easy to go ahead and pop these things up. So they might stick a little bit, but very gently peel them back so that way you're not making little holes or ripping off the foot altogether. So there you go. So what you want to do now is kind of size up your macarons 
and get ones that are about the same size because you want to pair them up so that way you have pretty identical sandwiches. You know, they're pretty uniform in shape. So we're going to pair some of these guys up and we're going to start filling them right after we get them all matched. Okay, these guys all have buddies now, so what I want to do is take one half of it, and my cream cheese is a little bit soft, so I'm not going to be able to pipe it like I wanted to, but that's okay, that's fine. Uh, the cookies are going to be stored in the refrigerator anyway until I'm ready to serve them. So what I'll do is just put a small little bitty smear, just a super thin smear, on one of the cookies like this, and where's your partner? Here's the buddy, here's the other side of it. And on the other one, I'm going to put a nice little smear of this twisted lemon curd that I made just the other day. So here you have the lemon curd and the cream cheese, and they're going to meet in the middle just like that. And there you go, a cute little pretty macaron. So I'm going to put this guy on the plate and finish these up, just pair them, and get them to my guests now, and the rest of them I'll just keep in the fridge. Here you have it, a beautiful plate of French lemon macarons with a little bit of cream cheese spread in the middle. Look at that. Look how beautiful and fluffy it is. And listen to this crunch, listen. That's the real deal right there. Mm. The lemon is bright and vibrant, but it's not cloying and overpowering. And the cream cheese is just enough to mellow it out and make it super smooth. Mm-hmm. These are amazing. Your guests are going to think that you got them from a French bakery, and it takes almost no effort to make them at all. I'll tell you what, try it out. Use different flavors, different fillings. I'll make another batch and put it out there for you as well. So here you go, French macarons, courtesy of Kitchen Bravo. Make them, store them in the fridge. They'll keep for about a week in an airtight container, but they won't last that long. Wow. They're divine. Mm. Until next time.